about the effects of diet and exercise. I know a lot of people hear this word, diet and exercise, but how is this particularly pertinent for hypertension? Again, a good question. As I said, hypertens hypertension is a lifestyle disorder. Mm -hmm. Those who eat healthy, mm -hmm. who exercise regularly, who know how to deal with the stress of their daily living, mm -hmm. um, tend to manage their pressures well. Particularly when you come to diet, there are two things. One is the amount of water you consume, mm -hmm. then the quality of food that you eat. Mm -hmm. And third is the quantity of food that we eat mm -hmm. that accounts to the calorie. Right. So the liquids, when you consume liquids, mm -hmm. the most neglected part of diet is water. So having about two to three liters of water every day mm -hmm. for an apparently healthy person prevents many diseases. Mm -hmm. So it's important to drink water frequently. Those who are diagnosed to have any kidney disease, heart disease, cannot drink two or three liters mm -hmm. without being advised by their doctors. Mm -hmm. But most healthy people should consume close to three liters of water every day. It's a very common misconception. We see a lot of people drinking water to be better, but this is something new, isn't it? That they should not drink it if you have been diagnosed with hypertension without your doctor's consult. Absolutely. Most people who have heart disease and kidney disease are not educated enough mm -hmm. by their you know, counselors right. and they get influenced by their friends and neighbors to consume more water, which right. is not a good thing. Coming back to the question of diet in hypertension, as I said, this other two things are the quality of food and the quantity of food. Mm -hmm. Quantity of food is also very important. The minute you consume more calories, your body tends to accumulate that energy and converts that into fat mm -hmm. and a person starts gaining weight. So the more quantity, more calorie, there's a weight gain. As a person gains weight, the amount of blood circulatory pipes within that extra weight adds more stress onto the heart. Exactly. So now heart has to pump blood to much more kilometers of tiny blood vessels which will tend to increase the blood pressure of the person. So very important to watch the quantity that you eat. And coming lastly, and the most important part, is the quality of food that you eat. Most of us, even when we call ourselves vegetarians, mm -hmm. it's a contaminated vegetarianism. True. That's how it is said, because eating cereals, like, you know, something made of rice, wheat, ragi, or jowar, they think it's vegetarianism. No, when the humans evolved, mm -hmm. we, we were in the forest, in the jungles, we were eating the fruits, the roots, mm -hmm. uh, the leaves. They were the vegetable. That is the vegetation that we were eating. When people started falling into small communities or tribes, they started cultivating these cereals. Okay. Cereals are very high in carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. They do not have enough protein. They do not have quality fat in it. So it's not a complete vegetarian food. True. So if we have to eat a healthy vegetarian diet, it means at least four to five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Green leafy vegetables and uh, regular vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most people don't have three or four servings of fruits and vegetables in the entire week. So that is what is leading to premature hypertension. Very true. Can we, when we talk about all this, so do you think a diet without millets or rice would be a good idea? Or do you think that it's moderation at its best? Or do we eliminate it completely? How do we go about managing the diet? Um, it has to be a balanced diet. Okay. What do you mean by a balanced diet? Mm -hmm. You get your calories, calculate how much one needs. I think about 16 to 1800 kilocalories should be good enough. Mm -hmm. Meeting a dietitian always helps. Mm -hmm. You know, even an elementary school child should be taught about diet, should be taught about exercise. The value of it, not just how to eat what is available to you on the table, mm -hmm. right? Recently, I traveled to Australia. Okay. We were on the beaches uh, in the Gold Coast and, uh, you know, I was really surprised when the natives told me that Ocean science is taught from the kindergarten to the master's degree. Because people used to go and 
you know, sink into the ocean and they would die. Now, children are educated from kindergarten to the masters. There is always be a topic called ocean science because that, that's what was killing most people. Now, hardly you see any native Australian dying. It's always the uh, tourists who come because they don't understand the ocean currents. So coming to our health, it's very important to understand diet because all of us eat, but we are so unscientific and so illiterate when it comes to food. I mean, this is the True. most fundamental understanding which is lacking. True. So please pick those foods which are not very high in calorie, but very high in nutritional value in terms of water content, vitamins, mm -hmm. and the minerals. Like, you know, green leaves have a lot of vitamin K. Right. They have your uh, iron. Right. So eat plenty of those. Mm -hmm. Have a plate full of, you know, green, red, yellow, colorful, because they all have different vitamins. Right. And then have little cereals, because you need some direct calorie. Because these fruits and vegetables are not rich in calorie, but sure. they have everything else which enhances your health. But you need some calorie for daily energy. Sure. I think that's what needs to come from carbohydrate and a little bit of fat is required. But that should be if you consist of about 15 to 20 percent of your energy from uh, protein, mm -hmm. about 15 to 20 percent from um, fat mm -hmm. and the rest you accumulate from all these remaining sources. True. That's the most ideal way of eating. We don't have a healthy balanced diet. In our Indian society, what we eat is absolutely, for lack of a better word, trash. So <laughs> that's true. We eat all of these rices and that's what we're taught at a young age. Now, moving on from diet, we've also talked about exercise. So what is the normal exercise that we, what is the normal protocol of exercise that we want to encourage in our Indian society? Right. It depends on the age of the person, right? If the children always tell them, go and play, right. go play outdoor, doesn't matter. However much hour you play, that's okay, okay. fine by them. Because these have to be inculcated from a very young age. True. So encourage them to play. Second, have a daily routine at home mm -hmm. where physical activity is seen as a gain, okay. not as a burden. Whatever small chores in the house, it doesn't matter. Try and do it yourself. Okay. And then coming to the middle age, and then the elderly people, they need to have a structured exercise mm -hmm. to retain their health and gain health. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? At least 45 minutes a day for five days in a week okay. is the minimum exercise which gives you certain level of prevention against heart disease, cancer, paralytic strokes, and many other diseases. 40 minutes of 40, 45 minutes of brisk walk aerobic exercises. It does not mean any other exercise is less beneficial. If you're an intense exerciser, you could do 15 minutes of fast running or cross trainer. Okay. That's fine. And uh, working people, I think they need to take away their chairs from their workplace. Very true. Because today, anybody who sits in a place for more than four hours, that person tend to have the risk of heart disease, stroke and cancer as much as a person who smokes four cigarettes. So today, sitting is called the new smoking. So please in your working places, take away chairs keep for at least- Keep them moving all yes. the time. Find a way to keep them moving. Fair enough.